Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw, and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. So how does a girl dressed in pink change the world? Well, when I think of a girl dressed in pink, my mind immediately goes to Elle Wood. Blonde hair, pink suit, nobody took her seriously until she came out on top of the class. Well, I happen to notice, like every June when we have our I Am Woman conference in St. Louis, there was this Susan G. Komen run that was going on, Race for the Cure, people everywhere, tens of thousands wearing the pink ribbon. And then all around the country, so we go to West Palm Beach, Florida, right? We live there, we operate there, and there's this bridge and the whole bridge turns pink. Everybody wears pink in October. How do these things happen? Well, I wanted to track it down, so I ended up finding the lady. Her name is Nancy Brinker. She used one painful, tragic moment in her life to give her the purpose to change the entire world. In my opinion, she is the grown up boss babe, Elle Wood. And her resume, her bio, check this out. She founded the Susan G. Komen Foundation. She went on to become the ambassador of Hungary while she was founding that organization and running it. All the while, she's serving as chief of protocol for George W. Bush as he was president. And then with Barack Obama, she got awarded the Presidential Medal of Honor. I'm telling you right now, ladies and gentlemen, this lady you're about to meet dressed in pink has changed the world and she's not stopping now. Are you ready to change the world dressed in pink? Let's go. Rapid Fire Questions with Nancy Brinker. Three words to describe yourself. Um, compassion, energy, and sometimes trouble. Favorite ice cream? Oh, chocolate. And um, chocolate with almonds is pretty much heaven. Dream car? I have, I love driving small cars because I don't like big crashes and it keeps me from getting on the highway. I like to drive around town in a small car. What's your coffee order? Starbucks with skim milk and some cinnamon. Rapid fire questions complete. You showed up dressed in pink. <laughs> of course. <laughs> okay, I have a real, my first question is really hard hitting, it's really tough. Are you ready? Mm. Do you have any color in your closet that isn't pink? <laughs> <laughs> Very little. <laughs> this is a pleasure though, to have a month designated mm -hmm. to my sister's favorite color. Mm -hmm. This is, she liked pink more than anything. And so when the time came for me to really get to work after she died and mm. memorialize her, I thought that was it, 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 pink. And then we thought for a long time and we developed the pink ribbon. And uh, people started using it. And then we went to New York for one of the event, race events. Other people picked it up, but that's okay. We wanted everybody to recognize the pink ribbon because it meant help, it meant hopefulness, and it meant uh, cure someday. So can you tell us just a little bit of Susan's story? She was a beautiful, sweet, kind woman. Most important thing about her is that, that she had the kindest heart I ever knew. But more than that, she cared about other people. Mm. And when she was in her last days, I'll never forget this, the nurse got her up out of bed to take a walk down to the children's floor. How old and, was she? Uh, she was 30, uh, 36. Mm. And so we're walking down on the children's floor and she sees this little boy trying to take out his tubes and trying to get away from the medication and yeah. whatever. And she walked up to him and sat on his bed and told him why he should keep taking his medicine. Mm. And that was the week she was dying. She was a beautiful soul. And um, she asked me before she died if I would cure the disease. Mm -hmm. And not only that, make sure that other people had access to care like we did. How did losing your sister affect you mentally, emotionally? I, I feel like I lost a part of my body when she died. Mm. I felt like I lost something I knew was never replaceable, yeah. ever. And um, though I still feel that way, I always feel her spirit, I always do. What was the first thing you did? Because she didn't, 
She didn't give you a small task. She's like, go well, cure cancer. Yeah. So yeah. when you get such a big initiative from yeah. somebody and it's close to your heart, it's somebody you loved and you want to make them happy, what what's the first thing that you did to take such a, a step to such a big thing? I went back to Dallas, Texas, where I was living, and I sat there almost in a in a funny kind of a state for almost eight or nine months. And then I met the man um, I was to marry, and he was so thoughtful and so kind, and he was very busy building his own business. So one night, I was we were sleeping, and I had this dream, and I saw my sister with a few of her friends, and they were carrying pink spears, like spears, yeah. and they were racing, and they were running, and they wanted to kill something. They wanted to conquer something. Yeah. So I, I sat straight up, and, and I was kind of shaking my husband. And I said, Norman, you have to get up. I finally thought of how, what we could do to make women aware. Because in those days, you couldn't use the words breast cancer or breast on TV or radio or uh. newspaper or anything. And I said, what we could do is we could, I could start an event maybe because women started running them and we could call it a, a race. Maybe it's a race for a cure. Uh, because that had been suggested to me. And he said, oh, can we go back to sleep and we'll talk about it in the morning? I said, no, <laughs> no, because you'll get up. And he was a very hard worker. So you had so like a vision. I had a vision. Yeah. And and then I went to, we, we had a wonderful one event going. Uh, Susan G. Komen Foundation did our first event in Dallas, Texas. It was always a big luncheon. Betty Ford came uh, the first year we launched it. And everybody thought that was fabulous and probably just enough but it wasn't. We had to have a grassroots yeah. movement side by side or people wouldn't know how serious the problem was. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. Betty remained a great friend all of her life. And her daughter, Susan, has remained a great friend of whatever life we have left mm -hmm. together. She's a great friend. Wow. And um, we started the race, though. And after about so many years, it was in almost every country, and the pink ribbon came to mean the war, the war against breast cancer. That's what it came to mean, the effort against it. And even um, later on, when I had been asked to be ambassador to Hungary um, and was traveling around the world, and a lot of times we went to Africa and different places because uh, President Bush and his wife Laura had taken on cervical cancer mm -hmm. and HPV, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and uh, doing a big movement. And so when we would go visit the few clinics, there was one cancer clinic in Tanzania, and I'll never forget the day, never forget it. And there was a, a young woman in there who had breast cancer. And one of the priests came to get me and said, uh, Ambassador, would you come and sit with her? But she knows who you are, and she knows what the pink ribbon means. So I said, of course I will. So here we were thousands of miles from our home, and a woman was asking me to wow. put the pink ribbon on her because she knew what it meant. And then I knew that it was making a difference. And we started seeing people seek care mm -hmm. earlier. And we started knowing about ways to deal with breast yeah. cancer. Yeah. It's, and mammography was becoming more popular, but it really wasn't until we understood cancer, and we're still not quite there, mm -hmm. where we began saving lives in a, in a pretty incredible, pace, um, still not where it needs to be. So speaking of saving lives, after fighting cancer for so many years, you ended up with your own diagnosis. Yes, I did. What did your treatment journey look like? It, it, it wasn't brutal. It was frightening mm -hmm. and brutal. Mm -hmm. it, it, it wasn't that I had the worst case. I didn't. Mm -hmm. I was still a sort of a stage one, but they knew there was something different about the cancer I had, that it yeah. would be more aggressive. Yeah. So I had a, a pretty decent amount of chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. That's the part that I dreaded every yeah. month. And losing your hair. I had just been married to my husband, um, you know, maybe a few months. And, you know, uh, feeling bad mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. And then I got really tired of feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's when I stood up and said one day, this is, this is really ridiculous. You're walking around whining and feeling bad when you should be working and feeling better. Mm. So it was right after that time when I was in treatment that I really committed myself for the rest of my life mm. if I had to, 
to make sure that it just didn't happen to other mm -hmm. women that way. Or that if it did, yeah. at least we could control it with drugs and, you know, other other situations that can, you know, all kinds of things that we're doing now yeah. in the treatment part. And that's what we want to do. We want to help women detect this sooner. Right. So in just a minute, we're going to come back and Nancy is going to share what she's working on now and some practical steps that you can take to protect your health. God is not obligated to heal a hurt that you won't give him. And I know you feel like you're at a fork in the road right now, but God is here to meet you. I'm here to tell you that your past does not determine your future. Your past prepares you for your future. And, and I know because I've been in the pain where I thought I should just survive. I remember finding out that I was adopted by my dad. I remember being molested when I was in fourth grade, raped when I was 13, bullied by the kids in school, and becoming a single unwed mother at 17 years old. I remember what it felt like when I married the man of my dreams and I thought he was one thing, he became drug addicted and I got foreclosed on. I was bankrupt, divorced, and a single mom again. My life should have been a statistic and you might feel the same way about yours, but you're not called to survive, you're called to thrive. I just finished the first chapter of I Will Thrive, and can I tell you, I could not put it down. It was so good. It was captivating, inspiring. I wrote down quotes. You've got to read it. God wants to take you to the promise, the future that he has for you that is so good and so wonderful. A thriving future, not based on what has happened, but based on his plans for you. He just needs you to take one step out. And that's why I want you to get this book today. I want you to go to the website, get this book, hold it near and dear to your heart and step out in life and thrive. Here's the thing I love about Susan. My girl, she went down fighting. She's like, hey, Nancy, before you do anything else, I just want you to cure cancer. So I want you to cure this thing. I want you to fix it. I want you to get it done. She said that like, hey, on the way home, I want you to grab some milk, pick up the dry cleaning, cure cancer, world peace, no big deal. She's like, we're gonna get this done. She didn't resign. She didn't just take it. She didn't go, this is the end. She said, no, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna fix this. And you know what, if you're in the middle of a health battle of your own, don't just take it lying down. Feel okay fighting. You know, I was on the phone with somebody I know today and they were saying, you know, my dad's cancer this, my dad's cancer that. And I was telling my friend, hey, you know, with all due respect, is that your dad's cancer? Or is that like the devil's cancer? They're like, no, cancer's like straight from the pit of hell. It's not my dad's. And I'm like, can we refer to it as the cancer your dad is fighting? And he said, yeah, let's do that, because my dad's not gonna keep this cancer. I want you to keep your outlook good. I want you to keep your hopes up. And I want you to give you a couple tools to fight this thing with. Let's not go down easy. Let's not lay down under this thing. Let's come up swinging. I love the theology side of that. It's called faith. My friend Nancy is Jewish. I'm a Christian, and we both believe in God. And God had a favorite son, his name was Abraham. And it said, Abraham died in faith, believing the promise. Susan, she died in faith, believing the promise that cancer can be cured and eradicated. And she's doing such a great job, right? She's helping people, early detection, early cure. And the thing she's doing is so great. And there's some nutrition things you can do to back up your body, help your immune system. And that's what I wanna encourage you to do today. You might have a friend who's going through it, a family member who's going through it, you might be going through it, Nancy went through it. I went through, not breast cancer. I had a cervical cancer diagnosis and that was about 23, 24 years ago. And friends, I'm still here and I'm still fighting, right? I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for the people that you know. So on my website, I wanna send you just a free PDF of some things that we have done to help fight cancer. And then there's some vitamins that help support your immune system. I've got an Amazon page and we're gonna put a QR code up right now. You can scan that. Go to my Amazon page, do your own research. I'm not a doctor, but I did research because I wanted to support my body. I try to eat healthy. I don't every day. I drank a Red Bull today, uh, but that is very not normal for me. I also drank my green juice today. I also took all my supplements today. I'm also working on keeping my acidity down. Some things that you can learn like acidity. An acid body is a great place for cancer to grow. An alkaline body is a hard place for cancer to grow. 
There's lots of things in wheatgrass, and wheatgrass at seven to 14 days old, if you juice that, it has so many nutrients that help your body fight. Let's fight this thing. I want you to get that free PDF. I want those things to help you. Check with your doctor, and maybe your doctor doesn't know, maybe you need to talk to a nutritionist too, but let's set up your immune system to fight this thing. Let's set up your soul to fight this thing. Let's set up your spirit to fight in faith. And I'm gonna believe with you that the end of this thing is better than the beginning of this thing. That with long life, you will be satisfied and you will be shown God's salvation. You know, there's healing in God. He does things for us. He doesn't heal us because we deserve it. He heals us because he's full of grace and he's full of mercy. And in just a little bit, I'm gonna pray that grace and mercy over you. You passed off the baton of leading the Susan G. Mm -hmm. Komen Foundation and you've started something new, yeah. something even more progressive. Yeah. So what are you doing now? I'm spending as much time as I can stay up every day working on it, as I just love this. For many years, for probably about 10 years of my 40 years of doing this, I said to myself, I've, I, I, the system has been set up. There's always improvements to be made. I'm not the only person who can do this now because we know directions that have to be made. Yeah. And I said one day, stop doing over and over and over again everything you've done for the last how many years? This is a time to apply what we do know. Okay. And what we do know is that now we know how to identify breast cancer very early. We understand what kind of breast cancer it is. Mm -hmm. We do have treatment and it, not, it may not necessarily work, particularly if it's a very aggressive, mm -hmm. but at least... A, a screened and found early, a woman has has a very high percentage of an opportunity to, to be cured of the disease. How does somebody who doesn't have money for detection, how do, how do they go about getting well, those kinds of services? It's toxic to people because if you can't get into a hospital for care, mm -hmm. a nonprofit care, then you really have a problem. And mm -hmm. so two of my girlfriends and I when I came back from Washington, where I was serving, I had a, a pamphlet in my mailbox, and it said, there are 80 to 100,000 women in Palm Beach County, the third largest county in the third largest state, who have no primary care, hmm. none, and very little insurance, very little access to care. And I, I looked at it, and I thought, this can't be. This feels like what I felt 10 years ago in yeah. Africa when I, th this can't be, yeah. we, we, we're better than this. So I got a group together. We call ourselves the Promise Fund of Florida just because that's where we're located and because we promised women we would fix this. Mm. So I have a very good friend in a company called Hologic. Um, for 18 or 19 years, I have worked with them and they have helped me every step of the way in the work that I've done. I called them, I said, look, I've discovered we have federally qualified healthcare centers now all over the country. And most people don't know what they are, but mm -hmm. they're called FQHCs, the acronym for them. Any citizen can walk in and get primary care. And once a woman has primary care, her chances go right up to the sky because mm -hmm. usually primary physicians can discover lumps, bumps, and other things that are irregular happening to a woman. So that's what we did. We went to Hologic. I begged them on hands and knees to get us a, a great piece of equipment, a 3D mammogram yeah. uh, machine and ultrasound and everything else now that we have. And uh, we sat there. It was one morning next to a Christmas morning about six years ago. And when that equipment arrived on a truck, we were like kids getting a load of candy. We were crying. Even the patients in the center, some of them got tears in their eyes. And mm -hmm. one of the women walked up to me and said, Ambassador, thank you so much. Nobody's ever done this for us. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever done anything like this. And so far, we have created now a culture of it, and we have screened, navigated, gotten treated, um, helped people through their uh, early breast cancer if mm -hmm. they have it. 26,000 of those wow. women. And wow. we have, the secret sauce is, is because we have brought on 19 incredible 
patient navigators. Mm. And these are women that are somewhere between a nurse and a social worker. Okay. We wake up at the Promise Fund every day, and many of us smile every day we walk up because we know we've saved somebody's life. You're making a difference. There's no insurance. And we supply all the social determinants. Yeah. The, the uh, transportation, if they need it. Mm. The child care. If there are problems in the home. If it's a food desert. On and on and on. And it's amazing to watch the transformation in these women. What are some practical steps that women can take at home to screen themselves or, or learn about, hey, yeah. what should I be looking out for? Get get used to once a month, you know, with soap and everything, just self-examine yourself. If you feel a lump that shouldn't be there, it shouldn't be there. So what is the stuff, like we say self-examine, but when I had to start doing that, I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, is that, what does that mean? Well, you have to sort of, that's what a good uh, primary physician can teach you or a, or a great nurse can teach you because it's really feeling like in circles like that and you'll feel uh -huh. a lump actually anywhere in your body if it, like that. You'll know that something's there that shouldn't be there. So it feels kind of hard. Yeah, it okay. usually feels hard or it can be soft and move around but still be attached. Okay. But still, it's it's a sign. Check it out. It should be checked out immediately. And you should do and that every month. Ev if you can, yes, you should do it every month. And um, most of the lumps and bumps are found by women themselves or their partners. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's important. I just wanted to say thank you for all of the people that you've helped that you don't even know about. Huh. Thank you for never putting the torch down. Thank you for doing this for your sister. But thank you for every other person that's faceless and nameless that you will probably not meet on this side of eternity whose life you have saved or whose families you have helped. I just wanted to say thank you for that. Well, thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. it, meant a, it meant a lot to me mm -hmm. for you to reach out because, and I appreciate what you said, and I just represent thousands and thousands of people who do this every day. So let me say that. I'm certainly not the only person by any stretch. And um, I, like you, am grateful to them, mm -hmm. all of them, for helping. And we will get over this. Mm -hmm. It's taking longer than I wanted, but we're going to get there. Would you do me a favor before we go? In just a minute, I'm going to pray. But before we go, would you just look right there and look at people who are sitting on their couch and maybe they're clinging to every word that you're saying because maybe they're going through their own battle like you did or maybe they're battling with a loved one like you did with your sister and they just need some hope, some encouragement. Would you just kind of look them in the eye right now and encourage them? If you are discouraged, the best thing to do is to find someone to talk to. It might be your priest, your rabbi, uh, it might, or your minister, or a social worker, you know, or a nurse, you know, or someone who's used to this. And it helps to be in prayer. I mean, it helps to be thinking about it and how can I, how can I get through this? Give me, God, give me the courage mm. to get through this. Mm. And also to be able sometimes to afford this kind of treatment that, and you always have people to call it. Promise Fund of Florida, we have a number to call. Anybody can call us. It's on the, you know, net. It, 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 it's, uh, we have a wonderful site and it tells all the things that we counsel patients to do. There are many other organizations, um, uh, the American Cancer Society, Susan G. Komen, lots of organizations that can help with one call. Mm -hmm. So don't ever let the fear take over. Mm. Don't let the fear take over. Let hope and inspiration take over. This is your year to make a change and become a new, improved version of yourself. The only challenge, you're ready, but you might not know where to begin. What if you could have a mentor to pour into you and for just five minutes a day, get the change that you've been wanting in your life? They would give you the information and then something to do an application so in just 24 days, you could get the affirmation from other people because you've done a complete transformation. That's where I come in. I wanna be your mentor on this 24 day journey. Each day, I will send you five minutes of insightful teaching, just five minutes. Everybody's got five minutes. And then one practical exercise. Why? Because I believe in the power of tiny tweaks leading to giant peaks. 
get access to invaluable insights, guidance, and a roadmap to a better life. If you find yourself starting new habits only to end up back at square one within weeks, I've put together this course with the specific intention of providing you with the steps to confidently walk in the destiny that God has envisioned for you. Are you ready to start this 24 day journey with me? Visit betterlifein5.com. It's time to invest in yourself. Better Life in Five. Your future's calling. It's time to answer. I love the idea of a promise fund. I think it's because I serve a God of promises. So I wanna pinky promise just a couple of things with you right now. So if you're a female out there, would you pinky promise me that you're gonna do your monthly self checks? A little bit of soap in a shower, just a couple minutes of your time can really be a life-saving measure. Okay, dads, grandpas, time to talk to your daughters and let them know. Start young girls, start taking care of yourself, start checking yourself. Guys, I know you feel burly and hairy and stuff, but pinky promise, pinky promise. We can save lives this way. Speaking of promises, we serve a God of promises. He promises to be there for you. He promises to give you strength. And believe it or not, He even promises healing. This is one of the things I know about God. His answers are yes or they're no. And by that I mean yes. Yes, healing happens in your life. Yes, this is gonna happen right now. And the no is not N-O, it's K-N-O-W. He knows, he knows something we don't know. And one of the things I do know, it says in the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you. They're for good and not for evil to bring you to an expected end. You know, I know this is an important message and we're not on TV making money. They don't pay us to be on here. Actually, we pay to be on television. <laughs> the stations that we're on, we pay for time because of the type of encouraging content that we have. And the only way we're here is if people promise to help us out. So I'm asking you today, if you found today's message impacting, important, it brought you hope, encouragement, or maybe you just felt something on the inside of you go, maybe I'm supposed to help support this. Would you please go to NicoleCrank.com forward slash donate. Your $20, $50, $99 a month makes a lot of difference. It helps us impact lives, it helps us save lives, and it helps us change eternities. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus on behalf of every person that's just sitting there right now. And they're thinking, oh, but would God help me? Well, the Bible says that you are Jehovah Rapha, you're our healer. It says you're Jehovah Jireh, that you're our provider and that you don't heal us because we're good, because we could never be good enough. It's, you're just, you're just a good God. And it also says in the Bible that the righteous run in, that you're a strong tower and the righteous run in and we are safe. So God, with you, we are safe and we are protected. God, I just pray a peace that passes all understanding come into their heart right now and they know that when they don't feel strong themselves, they can lean on you and you can be strong on our behalf. And we pray that right now, amen. I love it. It's yeah. it's a ton of work. It requires guys like this. Oh, <laughs> He's oh, making funny I faces. <laughs> it is a ton of work. G, 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 G. Oh, G. Okay, got it. And five, countdown. Five, four, three, two. <laughs> <laughs>